world news tonight. Search for survivors. The endless search and rescue continues as Turkey's president accepts response issues. Military parade. North Korea shows off the largest ever number of nuclear missiles at a nighttime parade. Biden says finish the job. Republicans booed as well as cheered for the US president's State of the Union address. A samba warm-up. Brazilians are gearing up for the upcoming carnival in Rio. This is Adaderna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. A very good evening to all our viewers. They're joining us on World News as we bring you updates from across the globe. Now we have a series of stories lined up tonight. But now the dire situation in Turkey and Syria is breaking tonight as rescue operations continue in Turkey following the deadly earthquakes that struck the region. For many hopes of finding loved ones alive are fading. But amongst the desperation, there have been miracles, such as a small boy pulled from the rubble in Antakya that more than 13 hours after being trapped, Turkey's President Tayyip Erdogan has defended his government's response to two catastrophic earthquakes, saying it was impossible to prepare for the scale of the disaster. The death toll from the deadly earthquake along the Turkish-Syrian border continues to rise, surpassing 15,000 on Thursday. According to the AFP, nearly 12,400 deaths were reported in Turkey alone, while the number of deaths in Syria has reached almost 3,000. And time is quickly running out for victims, as experts say, the 72 hours following such a disaster are considered the critical survival period. Meanwhile, in a report released by the U.S. Geological Survey, the final death toll from Monday's earthquake could pass 100,000. The report said there is a 14 percent chance of the death toll reaching the 100,000 mark. Syria is also calling out to the international community for assistance. The only direct international route for bringing aid into Syria was severely damaged in Monday's earthquake. The Bab al-Hawa border crossing has been a crucial route for millions of people in Syria's northwest as they live in areas the Syrian government does not control. However, due to sanctions, there are limited access points through which international aid can come into the country. Syria's UN ambassador said search and rescue activities were being delayed because of Western sanctions and called for sanctions relief. The EU, meanwhile, pledged to mobilize 7 million U.S. dollars in emergency assistance to both Turkey and Syria on Wednesday. Turkey will receive $3.2 million, while Syria will receive $3.8 million in humanitarian assistance to provide shelter, water and health care for people in need, as well as to help with the rescue operation. Meanwhile, Twitter access has been blocked in Turkey. Watchers say the Twitter ban in the country comes amid widespread complaints that the government's rescue efforts were slow and poorly manned and equipped. AFP also reported that the Turkish police detained 18 social media users who criticized the government. Twitter CEO Elon Musk said in a Twitter on Wednesday night, however, that the social media platform would soon be re-enabled, adding the Turkish government had informed the company of the issue, though it didn't specify a timeline. This comes as a number of Twitter users appealed to Musk for help, taking him to ask for his attention to handle the issue. While 70 countries, including Japan, have started providing emergency assistance to Turkey by dispatching rescue teams, standing out are the swift responses from Ukraine and Russia, in addition to the United States and China. Ankara has kept good relations with Moscow while also being close to Kyiv. Turkey contributed to the resumption of maritime transport of Ukrainian grain and the Turkish maker provider Ukraine with Bayraktar TB2 aerial drones at no charge. Russia also moved quickly to provide support. Russian President Vladimir Putin spoke with Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan by phone, expressing Moscow's readiness to immediately provide the necessary support. In a statement, the Russian presidential office said that Erdogan warmly thanked Putin for such a prompt and sincere response. Russia has assisted neighboring Turkey in dealing with major natural disasters before. In July 2021, Turkey rented BE-200 CHS planes from Russia to liquidate big forest fires that started simultaneously in several Turkish resorts. 
Russian rescue teams arrived in Turkey and Syria to help with the aftermath of the quake. Unlike their foreign counterparts, awaiting to be transported to the scene of the disaster, Russian rescuers immediately left for the mountainous area of Karaman Maraz, which was the hardest hit, as the Russian Emergencies Ministry's Aeromobile Task Force was equipped with off-road vehicles. Index provider MSCI said it had determined that some Adani securities should no longer be designated as free float after market participants raised concerns about the eligibility of the Indian conglomerate's companies for some of its indexes. Changes for Adani Securities associated with its MSCI Global Investable Market Indexes are due to be announced as part of its regular review for February. The group led by billionaire Gautam Adani has been engulfed in crisis since U.S. short seller Hindenburg Research published a report on January 24th accusing the conglomerate of improper use of offshore tax havens and stock manipulation. It also raised concerns about high levels of debt and what it said were excessive valuations. The Adani group has denied the allegations, saying the short seller's narrative of stock manipulation has no basis and stems from an ignorance of Indian law. MSCI defines a free float of a security as a proportion of shares outstanding that is considered available for purchase in public equity markets by international investors. Adani Group did not immediately respond to requests for comment in his response to the MSCI statement. The report and its aftermath wiped out $110 billion of Adani's seven main listed stocks in slightly more than a week, and its flagship Adani Enterprises was forced to abandon a $2.5 billion stock offering. Nuclear-armed North Korea showcased its missile production missiles during a nighttime parade, displaying more intercontinental ballistic missiles than ever before and hinting at a new solid fuel weapon. The country has forged ahead with its ballistic missile program, test launching dozens of advanced missiles last year despite United Nations Security Council resolutions and sanctions. Imagery released by the state media of Wednesday Night Parade showed as many as 11 Hwasong 17s, North Korea's largest ICBM, which are suspected to be able to strike nearly anywhere in the world with a nuclear warhead. The Hwasong 17 was first tested last year. Alongside them at the parade were what some analysts said could be a prototype or mock up of a new solid fuel ICBM in canister launchers. Developing a solid fuel ICBM has long been seen as a key goal for the country, as it could make its nuclear missiles harder to spot and destroy during a conflict. North Korea held the parade in Pyongyang to mark the 75th anniversary of the founding of its army. Leader Kim Jong-un attended it with his daughter, who is seen as playing a possible future leadership role in the hereditary dictatorship. South Korea's foreign minister criticized North Korea for holding the event when it is facing a worsening food crisis and economic difficulties. North Korea has not launched its new missile submarine, however, so the parade weapon suggests intentional signaling that Pyongyang is pursuing a complex land-based ICBM deterrent. Most of the country's largest ballistic missiles use liquid fuel which require them to be loaded with propellant at their launch site, a time-consuming process. It is unclear how close a suspected new missile could be to testing. North Korea has sometimes displayed mock-ups at the parades. The United States, Britain and Australia carried out joint air drills over the Nevada desert and beyond as part of an effort to simulate high-end combat operations against Chinese fighter aircrafts and air defences. U.S. Air Force Colonel Jared J. Hutchinson, commander of the 414th Combat Training Squadron that runs Red Flag, said the annual drills were not tied to any recent events. On Saturday, a U.S. fighter jet shot down a suspected Chinese spy balloon off the coast of South Carolina, hiking tensions. At the heart of the drills was addressing the vast distances that the United States, Britain and Australia would contend with when operating across the Pacific and improving interoperability of the three countries' air forces. For the crew aboard the Royal Air Force's Voyager, that means serving as a kind of gas station in the skies, providing air-to-air -air refueling of fighter aircraft carrying out the simulated mission. The Pentagon has voiced growing concern in recent years about pressure by Beijing on self-rule Taiwan, an island China sees as a breakaway province. Beyond the tanker aircraft, Britain also fueled Eurofighter Typhoon fighter jets in the exercises. Australia contributed EA-18G Growler aircraft, according to data provided by Red Flag organizers. The U.S. government has identified China as the U.S. military's top strategic priority, even as it devotes billions of dollars to support Kyiv in repelling invading Russian forces. Speaking last week in Washington, U.S. Central Intelligence Agency Director William Burns also cautioned the United States knew, as a matter of his intelligence, that she had ordered his military to be ready to conduct an invasion of self-governed Taiwan by 2027. 
We're going into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with mobile news. Welcome back to World News Tonight. Now, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky began a tour of Europe in search of better aerial firepower to turn the war against Russia, winning a British pledge to train Ukrainian pilots on advanced NATO fighter jets. The visit comes as Russian plans, uh, Russia plans a new offensive with the war nearing one year's mark. The following visuals of this story is graphic. Viewer discretion is strictly advised. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky landed in the United Kingdom on Wednesday, embraced by Prime Minister Rishi Sunak at the airfield. The two then sped to 10 Downing Street to set the tone for the visit. Mr Zelensky, do you want British fighter jets next? Ukraine's desperate need for heavy weapons ahead of an expected Russian winter offensive. It's a privilege to have you here, Volodymyr. Uh, we want to stand by you throughout this conflict and ensure that you're victorious. Thank you so much, Rishi, for inviting me and... It's a rare trip abroad for the Ukrainian leader in the midst of a war. Many expected Zelensky to flee for his life after Russian forces stormed into his country last year. But he remained in Kiev, a symbol of Ukrainian resistance, as his fighters first blunted Moscow's onslaught and then began to roll back the Russian advance. Zelensky is known to have left his country only once since the invasion to visit Washington in an appeal for weapons and support. He's now in London for the same purpose. He spoke to the British Parliament, thanking them for providing Kiev with arms and training. We know Russia will lose. And he upped his request for hardware, seeking combat jets. The UK is already training Ukrainian pilots in advanced fighter aircraft, but London has not said whether or not they'd provide the planes along with the instruction. Zelensky toured a UK military base where Ukrainian soldiers were learning to operate British Challenger tanks. These are but some of the Western weapons in the pipeline. Germany, Denmark and the Netherlands are planning to send more than 100 Leopard 1 tanks to Kyiv. Germany's defense minister on Wednesday said a battalion of more modern Leopard 2 tanks would go to Ukraine in the first three to four months of the year. Zelensky's visit to the UK, including a meeting with King Charles at Buckingham Palace, comes a day after ominous warnings from the battlefield. Uh, Ukraine's National Security Chief Alexei Danilov told reporters this week Russian forces were likely to attack in Zaporizhia in the south and possibly make a new push in the eastern Kharkiv region as well. Danilov said he expected Russia needed to show territorial gains as the one-year anniversary of what Moscow calls a special military operation approaches on February 24th after a year of humiliating military setbacks. And while Danilov said Western tanks were helpful, the country faced a pressing shortage of ammunition, particularly 155 millimeter shells, telling reporters, quote, because if you have weapons but nothing to fire, then this is a challenge. U.S. President Joe Biden faces a good deal of pessimism after he challenged Republicans to lift the U.S. debt ceiling and support tax policies that were friendlier to the middle class Americans in a State of the Union speech that served as a blueprint for his 2024 re-election campaign. Fighting for the sake of fighting, power for the sake of power, conflict for the sake of conflict gets us nowhere. U.S. President Joe Biden challenged Republicans to, quote, finish the job and work with him in this year's State of the Union speech on Tuesday. It was his first large-scale public face-off with a more divided Congress after last year's midterms. Some Republicans want Medicare and Social Security to sunset. I'm not saying it's a majority. <laughs> A speech that was surprisingly rowdy at times, with lawmakers heckling the president and Biden firing back unscripted rebuttals, as when he mentioned his immigration reform. Congress must restore the right. And, the and when he said Republicans were holding the economy hostage. Instead of making the wealthy pay their fair share, some Republicans, some Republicans want Medicare and Social Security to sunset. I'm not saying it's a majority. When GOP lawmakers denied they planned to cut those programs, Biden fired back. Well, I'm glad to see you. No, I tell you, I, I enjoy conversion. Let's all agree, and apparently we are. Let's stand up for seniors. 
Overall, Biden offered a positive view of the country in a speech that focused on the economy and which called on Republicans to help him raise the debt ceiling and make tax friendlier for the middle class. There's no reason we can't work together and find consensus on important things in this Congress as well. However, Republicans say they will only allow the $31.4 trillion debt ceiling to rise in exchange for spending cuts. Join us tonight are the parents of Tyree Nichols. Welcome. Among the guests in the audience were Tyree Nichols' mother and stepfather, who Biden introduced when he called on Congress to overhaul policing. When police officers or police departments violate the public trust, they must be held accountable. Do something. Do something. Biden's appeal for bipartisan unity comes while he remains unpopular in the polls. A recent Ipsos poll put his approval rating at 41 percent, close to the lowest level of his presidency. The Republican response to Biden's speech by Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders rejected the president's positive take on the country. In the radical left's America, Washington taxes you and lights your hard-earned money on fire. But you get crushed with high gas prices, empty grocery shelves, and our children are taught to hate one another on account of their race. Biden's aides see the speech, likely to have drawn his largest TV audience of the year, as a milestone ahead of his second presidential campaign, which he is expected to launch in the weeks to come. Google's AI chatbot Bard shared inaccurate information in a promotional video on Twitter. The blunder shows the challenges Google faces as it races to integ integrate AI technology to compete with Microsoft, which unveiled Bing with ChatGTP technology. Google's new, highly touted AI chatbot Bard has already made a boo-boo. Introduced this week, Bard was touted in an online ad by Google that ran in the company's Twitter feed. In the tweet, Google described the chatbot as a launchpad for curiosity that would help simplify complex topics, and it included a short GIF video ad of Bard in action. In the ad, Bard is given the prompt, quote, What new discoveries from the James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST, can I tell my nine-year-old about? Bard responds with a number of answers, including one suggesting the JWST was used to take the very first pictures of a planet outside the Earth's solar system or exoplanets. This is inaccurate. The first pictures of exoplanets were taken by the European Southern Observatory's Very Large Telescope in 2004, as confirmed by NASA. The error was spotted hours before Google hosted a launch event for BARD in Paris, where a Google senior executive touted Bard as the future of the company. Google's launch event came one day after Microsoft unveiled plans to integrate its rival AI chatbot, ChatGPT, into its Bing search engine and other products. As for Bard's mistake, a Google spokesperson told, quote, this highlights the importance of a rigorous testing process, something that we're kicking off this week, so that, quote, Bard's responses meet a high bar for quality, safety, and groundedness in real-world information. Shares of Google parent Alphabet were down more than 7% in early trading Wednesday, outpacing declines in the broader S&P 500. Welcome back to World News tonight at the morning. Let's take you around the world in a minute. Former Twitter executives acknowledged that blocking tweets linked to Hunter Biden's laptop was a mistake as they were drilled by U.S. lawmakers in the Republican-controlled House of Representatives. A fire broke out at a U.S.-owned drone factory in Latvia. Emergency services were called to the Idris autonomy factory on the outskirts of Riga. The same drew 15 astronauts who are currently on board the Chinese Tiangon Space Station are making preparations for their first extraterrestrial activities which will be conducted in the next few days. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says the Chinese Billion Spy program is far more extensive than previously known, and it was a part of a wider fleet that has spanned five continents. The Australian government will examine surveillance technology using its offices of the Defense Department, amid reports that the Chinese made cameras installed their ways to turn to race. 
that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. And in case you missed to watch any of the stories we add tonight, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. And we leave you tonight with drummers, dancers and revelers filling the Samba Drome in Rio de Janeiro for practice and rehearsals for the city's famous carnival parade. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and good night.